All right, welcome back. This is lab seven for our class and uh, pretty short lab today. We're going to go over how to create ortho mosaics and uh, explore some options with those and look at how we uh, export the ortho photos themselves from Metashape and uh, play around with those a little bit. So uh, I've opened my lab six document from last week and the very first thing that we want to do is uh, give ourselves a bit of an insurance policy here and uh, save this to a lab seven file. That way we don't mess anything up. All right, so uh, I've got my canopy model from last time here. Remember we did three things, a surface model, a train model, and a canopy model. And uh, let's do a couple things first. So let's flip over and look at our dense point cloud uh, that we created. and. Uh, I'm just going to double check the region that we uh, uh, that we created uh, just to make sure that it's looking good like I wanted to. Uh, it hasn't changed at all. It's still got our our area in it. Okay, that looks pretty good um, because it, it's only going to create the uh, ortho within this region. Of course, it only created the DEM within the region anyway, so the ortho will be constrained to that. Now, I want to open up my surface model here, and uh, we're going to go up to Workflow and choose Build Ortho Mosaic. Um, and a couple things to point out. Okay, so one is that this is going to build the ortho mosaic off of whatever the active DEM is. And so make sure that you have the right one selected. We're going to use the surface model in this case. Okay. And for the options for building the ortho mosaic, you can see the projection information is grayed out. And the reason it's grayed out is that we've already established the projection with the DEM, and so it's not going to let us change our mind at this point. If you want it in something different, you got to go back and redo the DEM, and then you can use that to, to, uh, to ortho rectify your, your photos. For the parameters, so we're going to use our DEM, again, the active DEM as our surface. If we had built a mesh model here, then we ha would have the option of using that mesh model for, the, uh, um, for our surface for the ortho mosaic too. The blending modes uh, refer to how uh, Metashape is going to adjust the colors in the overlap regions or along the seam lines of the ortho photos. And uh, the mosaic uh, option here just does a, uh, a dodging, color dodging uh, sort of technique. There's uh, average, which just takes the average pixel values for the overlapped areas, and then disabled, of course, just turns that off. Uh, so we'll leave that as our default with mosaic. Um, it's going to produce a set of seam lines which tell us sort of like which Im image the uh, uh, you know, set of pixels comes from, right? And, and those will be sort of like sharp, you know, straight uh, lines and some geometric shapes. If you wanted something or needed something that was a little bit more um, irregular or maybe natural, then you can turn this refine seam lines option on. Uh, enable hole filling. If your DEM has voids or holes in it, this is a good option to, uh, to turn on and have it fill those in so that you don't get uh, blank spaces in your ortho mosaic. Pixel size. Um, this is set off of the original images, and so we can change this. You know, you may want to have this be, uh, in this case, like uh, one and a half centimeters rather than 1.4 and change, right? Um, uh, a lot of times we would want to uh, uh, have this match another data set that we would uh, have, okay? Uh, the region stuff, we've already set that. Um, we don't need to worry about setting that here, okay? So when you've uh, got all these options set the way you want them, you can just hit OK and let it rip. Now, this is going to take a little bit of time, so I'm going to pause here and then we'll come back when it's done. All right, that's finished running now, and we can see it shows up here as the ortho mosaic in the workspace pane. And if I double click on that, it's going to open it up in the uh, in the same window that the terrain model was in. And I've got the seam lines are already turned on. That was going to be the next step, but we'll go ahead and look at that right now. So the seam lines are just the the, the poly lines that show. Uh, where it sort of switched from using pixels from one image to pixels from another image. 
and you can turn those on and off with this uh, button up here on the main toolbar. I can just toggle them on and off. Uh, let me turn my markers off so they're not in the way either. And uh, you know, it's just kind of kind of curious. It's worth looking at these just to uh, to, to see. Uh, sometimes you'll see patterning on the uh, image that's the result of these um, seam lines too. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and turn these off and uh, and just kind of look around at this image. You know, this, this turned out really pretty well, and uh, I just love looking at these ortho mosaics. I think they're really cool. Um, and you know, we can we can zoom in and see a number of things. Like here's our. Uh, uh, our base station for our RTK unit and the and sort of the rover unit that we had, right? We can see our ground control points. It did a really nice job at sort of reconstructing this uh, this woodland patch here. I'm going to turn these seam lines back on. This isn't in the lab so much. It's just something I wanted to point out. See all these little tiny uh, polygons with the uh, with the seam lines. So this is basically meaning that that it's pulling pixels from one image versus another and it's just it, it's like pretty uh, kind of squirrely around here where it's getting these images from and sometimes if these get really bad then it creates this smudging effect or these weird artifacts in your ortho mosaics and this can be due to having a surface model that's really sort of overly detailed for the purposes of your ortho mosaic and so if you're seeing a lot of these or if you're getting really kind of lousy reconstruction in these uh, spots, then uh, you may want to try uh, creating a DEM at a lower, a coarser resolution and then use that as the basis for the ortho mosaic. In, in this case, it looks like it did a reasonably good job, so I'm not terribly worried about it. Um, so. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of fun to spend a little bit of time playing around with this ortho mosaic and checking it out. Uh, when you're ready, then the next thing that we're going to do is we want to duplicate this ortho mosaic. Okay, uh, and it's going to take a second to do that. Um, you can rename it. I'm not going to worry about renaming it at this point. Um, but what we want to do after this is finished here is uh, now. Uh, redo our ortho mosaic. So we're going to do build ortho mosaic again, and it's going to overwrite uh, the active sort of ortho mosaic. And this time we're going to turn the blending mode uh, off. So choose disabled here, and uh, go ahead and run this. Um, this is going to take a little bit of time. I'll pause again, and then we'll come back and then look at what effect the blending mode has on the uh, on the final product. All right, so here is the ortho mosaic that has the color balancing turned off. And uh, you can see some pretty obvious uh, differences here uh, between these two. If I zoom in and just sort of uh, toggle back and forth with these, right? There's the color balanced one, and there's the one with the color balancing turned off, okay? So you can obviously see the, uh, the seam lines here, okay? So uh, I think it's worth using this as an example just to uh, kind of point out that some of the patterns that we may see uh, that, that appear to be sort of like color differences or ground sort of patterns may actually be um, artifacts or products of this, uh, the differences in the color between the images and then the color balancing uh, process itself, okay? so. Uh, just something to bear uh, in mind. So um, next thing we want to look at here is just like how do we get these images and products out of Metashape? You know, Metashape is really like a, a pretty cool application and can do a lot of stuff, but you know, it's not really a, a, a GIS or a, an analysis uh, application. And so a lot of times we need to get these products out and then put them into uh, another product like ArcGIS or uh, an image classification package, right? And so to do that, uh, we're gonna come over here in the workspace pane and I'm gonna right click on my ortho mosaic and I'm gonna choose export. And uh, we'll just choose this first option to export it as an image. And uh, we've got a whole bunch of options here. So the first is that you do have the option of choosing a, a different coordinate system if you want to export in that. 
Again, strongly recommend that you choose a projected coordinate system. Um, and, uh, you know, reprojecting raster data in other software applications can be kind of a hassle. And Metashape does it very efficiently. So uh, it may be a good idea to uh, have Metashape uh, exported in the projection you want rather than dumping it out and then trying to reproject it someplace else. So uh, you can change your pixel size here. Um, this uh, split in blocks option is really useful if you have a really large uh, ortho mosaic. You know, a big ortho mosaic can easily be, you know, several gigabytes in size, which becomes a real bear to kind of deal with. And so, with uh, with this option, then it will split it into tiles or blocks of, uh, you know, in this case, ten thousand by ten thousand pixels. And so, the individual images themselves are just much smaller and they're easier to deal with. Okay. Uh, background color, you know, whether you want that to be white or black. Um, the region boundaries, if you wanted a, a, just a subset of what your ortho mosaic was, you can, you can set that in here. And then just some options about, you know, sort of creating the files and uh, compression that's applied. So once you get all these set the way you want them, you can just go ahead and hit export. Uh, we're not actually going to uh, do that right at the moment. I just wanted to point out that this is uh, how you would you would do that. So I'm just going to cancel out of this uh, at this point. And uh, so for the lab, the next thing we want to do is actually create a quality report. So go to export a, uh, a report. Um, you know, hopefully you remember how to do that from the previous labs. Um, but uh, so I won't go through that here, but you will need to submit that report uh, with your uh, with your final um, write up for the lab. OK, so the last thing we want to do is look at the actual ortho photos themselves and uh, and Metashape is kind of cool and then it will allow you to uh, export the uh, the corrected ortho photos. So um, I want to grab a couple of photos here. And I checked this out ahead of time. So we want photo 528 and 536. So I'm down in the photo tray and I just held the control key down to select both of these photos here. And uh, these are of the sort of same area. It's this sort of uh, reddish brown vegetation sort of patch. So this sort of region of the image. And uh, what I want to do is compare the original photos to the uh, ortho photos uh, for these. So, uh, so I've got these guys here. And then over in the workspace, I'm going to right click and do export ortho photos. OK, um, gives me the pretty much similar options to uh, just exporting the ortho mosaic, but with a couple of differences. First thing to point out here is that it's giving me a, a template for the file name. So it's going to go ahead and auto generate those, right? Uh, I can just leave it like it is right now. Uh, and then the other thing here at the bottom is whether we want to export all the ortho photos or just the selected ones. And so we'll pick, make sure selected is, is, uh, is checked here. And then we'll hit export. And it's going to say, where do you want these? All right. So in my lab seven directory, I'm going to create a folder called, uh, ortho photos okay and uh, and put them in there and I'll take just a second here to uh, export those ortho photos okay good so now what we want to do is switch over to uh, uh, a program like uh, PowerPoint or something like that and uh, and see how these uh, original photos compare versus the uh, the ortho photos so all right so here's PowerPoint and uh, I'm gonna grab the original photos themselves and bring those in as images and uh, they're kind of big to work with so I'm just gonna go ahead and resize these to say like four inches high um, yeah, that should be pretty good. Okay. And now I want to try to match these things up as best I can. So, uh, I'm noticing here that, um, I'm going to need to rotate one of these, uh, relative to the other. So if I go 180 degrees, probably a little more than 180 degrees, um, and then I'm going to try to match up this uh, brown 
reddish brown vegetation patch here. And uh, let's get rid of that and make this a little bigger. So uh, you can use these tools uh, for um, sending things, you know, sort of backwards and forwards to try to match things up. Okay. Um, and uh, well, it's not too bad. There's only so good you're going to be able to do here uh, with this because of the uh, perspective displacement and the terrain displacement. Okay, so you, you want to just try to get it as good as you can um, and, uh, and just kind of note the differences. Okay, and then once you have it like as good as you think you can get it, then uh, take a take a screen shot of this or save this as an image that you, so you can put it in your uh, in your lab document. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, I guess we'll just use this blank slide up here, and let's bring in our ortho photos. Um, there we go, our ortho photos. So um, notice that the ortho photos, of course, like they're not square anymore, right? So, because uh, we have uh, ortho rectified those to account for the train and the perspective displacement. Um, and uh, with these, also notice that I don't have to rotate um, the one image. They are already pretty well aligned, okay? I do have to sort of rescale them a little bit. And the reason I have to do that is actually a PowerPoint thing. It doesn't have anything to do with the ortho photos themselves. Um, PowerPoint is trying to kind of maximize the space that each uh, one of these um, uh, photos sort of uh, takes up and uh, so they're not scaled sort of uh, correctly when I bring them in. But if I monkey with this enough then it should get to a spot where they overlay pretty good, which, yeah, this is not too bad. All right, so send them back and forth. So, so notice that my, my uh, images sort of overlay just a lot nicer because we've corrected for the displacement uh, in the image, okay? Notice also I've got this sort of weird ragged edge at the end where it was, uh, you know, getting a little uh, funky with uh, um, the, that sort of high resolution surface model. And, uh, and matching the, uh, uh, the, the, the seam lines, figuring out where to pull from each of the images to construct it. But from this sort of larger field area here, things are, are looking pretty good. So same thing here, go ahead and take a screenshot or uh, save this as an image, and then you'll need that in your lab report, okay? Uh, so last thing, let's flip back over here to, uh, to Metashape and uh, just make sure you save your document uh, at the end when you're done. And that is pretty much it for lab seven. In the next lab, we're going to uh, shift gears a little bit and run this photogrammetry process with some multispectral data and, uh, and take a look at this Parker Farm area in, uh, in sort of this multispectral space. So that should be a pretty good, pretty good lab for us. And we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.